In this final leg of the fall 2021 road trip, we're going to be hugging the mid-Atlantic coast of the United States, all the way from Long Island to the Outer Banks. And we've never been to this area before, so it's all going to be new. Enjoy the ride! I'm free in my RV We only spent one night here and uh, one night was probably enough Let's stop it off I don't know where the next gas station is going to be Somewhere in New York, I presume well, At 3.53 per gallon for credit card This has to be by far the most expensive gas in the whole trip We have about an hour to kill, so let's stop here. Maybe we can get something to eat, but everything seems to be closed for the season. Here's Niantic Bay, by the way. And something that surprised me a lot about New England is how seasonal it is. A lot of places are already closed for the season. I guess we'll have breakfast on the ferry. Let me tell you something. Even though we've enjoyed our time in New England tremendously, I think it is time to go someplace else. I mean, we loved the nature, the food was amazing, and so were all the great people we met. But now, the South is calling. And this trip we're about to take, in some ways, bucket list. We're going to take several ferries, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, the Jersey Shore, the Outer Banks, so oh, it's going to be such a great adventure. Here we go, all aboard! There it is, across the Thames River, the Fort Griswold Monument, dedicated to those who fell during the Battle of Groton Heights on September 6, 1781. And, by the way, shouldn't it be called the New Thames River, since we are in New London? Just saying. There's once again the monument, also called Groton Monument, since that is the name of the town on that side of the river. Here's Fort Trumbull, nowadays a state park and a museum. That would be the new London Harbour Lighthouse, dating back to the 18th century. Wow, would you take a look at those mansions? Isn't that something? There's once again the lighthouse, as we approach the open waters of the Long Island Sound. And that would be the new London Ledge Lighthouse. And on the other side, Every Point Lighthouse. Looking to the west, if you squint hard enough, you might be able to see the New York City skyline over the horizon. Nah, not really, if only the Earth was flat, right? But don't despair, we'll see New York soon enough, and lots of it. Mm -hmm. 
That's Plum Island Lighthouse. We're getting close. Orient Point Light, perhaps? We are in the Empire State, New York. Now what to do? What to do? I wanted to go to Sag Harbor, but first we're towing, so we're not so maneuverable. And I had not realized how fragmented this eastern part of Long Island is. So we would need to either take two ferries or drive around. Uh, and either way, it's a 90 minute detour. Even though it is early, at some point we want to make it to our destination before sundown and we're actually staying at a harvest house tonight. We're not really supposed to park here, please don't tell anybody, but we really need to take a break and regroup and figure out what we're gonna do. Here's looking south, towards the area I kind of want to visit, but it will not happen today. Obviously more research should have gone into this. This is by the way called Truman's Beach. Hmm, 11.6. You think we'll make it? Lots of wineries in this area, by the way. And the lighthouse. Horton Point Lighthouse. It's supposed to have views of the sound and even a museum. Okay, I got myself into a dead end. Again. And all this to see a lighthouse that is closed right now and one which you can't even see from the road. Okay, let's not do that again. Long Island... Not exactly what I expected, I mean, I didn't know what to expect, but I was hoping to be able to stop at different places, maybe more ocean views. And maybe it is us, but the farther west you go, the least RV friendly it seems. And the weather certainly does not want to cooperate. Also, I guess there's a reason why they called it Long Island. It is long. It is a long drive. We're gonna get off the main highway here for a little bit, see the town, how people live. After all, the idea was to explore Long Island, but I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. This is even more stressful than the expressway, I think, so let's get back on it and continue on the journey west. Complicated parts of the country to navigate, like this area, are probably best to explore with a camper van and wait till we get to the parkway which tow vehicles are not allowed and vertical clearance is unclear. Luckily, we're almost there, but it has not been an easy drive. Here we are arriving at Oceanside, New York, and our harvest host is a brewery and let me tell you, after this stressful drive, I'm so ready for an IPA. The brewery is located in this industrial area, so let me find out where to park. Alright, we're going to park across the street temporarily while they finish dismantling those tents, and then we're gonna park right next to that other rig, in front of the brewery.
actually very nice brewery everybody's super friendly the bartender was into hiking actually we ordered some italian from a local restaurant and called it a night It's a brand new day and let's fill up the tank because things are about to get really complicated here. Today we're going to do something, something we've actually done before, just not towing a travel trailer, which in this case greatly complicates things. We're going to be doing something no prudent, level-headed RVer in their right mind would ever do. Today we're going to be driving in Brooklyn, New York, not necessarily by choice, there is a parkway, a very nice highway actually, but the rules about vertical clearance and RVs are very unclear, so we're going to take the truck route just to be on the safe side. Safe being a very loose term here, considering what we are about to do. Yeah, things would be so much easier on the parkway, which we could probably get away with if we had a camper van. Of course, we would miss this experience. Check it out, the World Trade Center, you can see it all the way from here. With each block that we pass, it's starting to look more and more like the city that never sleeps. Let me tell you, that's a very nice condo right there. It is like an obstacle course, but oddly enough, I find myself, in a weird way, enjoying the experience. There, we can already see the gigantic towers of the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Our cross-city adventure is almost over.
We've driven across this bridge once before actually and as I recall, the views of Manhattan are supposed to be spectacular, even though you kind of have to look back a little bit. Luckily, I have Illy to operate the camera. Now, isn't this view worth the white knuckle drive? I think it was. The drive through Staten Island much more relaxed. And now we're about to enter the Garden State. Our first point of interest in New Jersey is going to be Sandy Hook which is this barrier's pit at the north end of the Jersey Shore and home to the only clothing optional beach in the state. Of course, the reason we're here is for the spectacular views of the New York skyline afforded by this site, strategically located at the southern entrance to Lower New York Bay. Wait, wait till you see it! It is the off-season, so entrance is free. Let's park right here and have a quick lunch. All right, right here on the side of the road, made a sausage sandwich with uh, parmesan, onions on a brioche, and, uh, and we have a view. Well, came to Sandy Hook here, which is, by the way, free. Even, it doesn't matter if you have the America the Beautiful or not. It's, it is free in the off-season, and then in the on-season, it's like 20 bucks per car. I have no idea. But the reason I came here, by the way, you're, is you're not supposed to swim on the beach in the off-season because there's no lifeguard but the reason we came here is mainly for the beautiful view of Manhattan that you get from this beach and we may go all the way to the end but but for now I'm just gonna take the picture from here it's a beautiful day too perfect weather here in uh, yeah we're now in New Jersey yep that's what I'm talking about Let's do a long pan here from left to right, starting with downtown, Lower Manhattan. And of course, there's the World Trade Center, such an iconic skyline. Even from this somewhat unusual vantage point. As we get to Midtown, of course, the Empire State Building. Yep, these are the two most iconic parts. Now, let's drive all the way to the end. Is that a Nike missile I see? And here we are at North Beach, and there's an observation deck. Yeah, this is what I wanted to know. Where's the Statue of Liberty? Let's look for it. It's to the right of the Verrazano, to the left of this around there. Amazing how much clearer it looks from up here. Once again, the Empire State Building and all those newer skinny skyscrapers and uh, even Coney Island can be seen right there on the foreground. Here's the Fort Hancock 9-gun battery and you have no idea how long I've been wanting to come to this place and see those views of New York. I've studied the maps and seen online pictures and now we finally made it here. I'm not gonna put it in the bucket list category, but almost. Almost! This here is called Officer's Row at Fort Hancock, which are these 18 homes where married officers used to live. There's the Sandy Hook Lighthouse, the oldest working lighthouse in the United States, dating back to 1764. Some of the houses have seen better days, 
Some are beautifully restored. Now let's continue towards the rest of the Jersey Shore, which of course, it is over 120 miles, so we're not gonna be able to see everything in one day. This is Seabright, with all these luxury homes on the right and the tall seawall on the left. We won't be able to park anywhere, but at least we can see it from the car. This seems to be downtown Seabright. Very nice. Now we're on to Monmouth, very similar. Actually, it seems more developed, with this fancy club here on the left and some condominiums coming up ahead. some huge houses around here. I wanted to hug the coast as much as possible, but sometimes we're forced inland by obstacles like this. I believe this is Deal Lake. And eventually, we're gonna have to go inland for real, otherwise we'll never make it. So suffice to say, we're not going to be able to see everything. And we're definitely skipping Atlantic City since we've been there before. We're gonna hug the coast here one more time, by the borough of Bayhead. Then we have one more point of interest we want to see, and after that we're heading England for real. It's another typical beach town with narrow streets and oceanfront property. Let me tell you, these are beautiful mansions here by the beach, but after a while, it's all the same. And I don't want to bore you with all this opulence, so we're going to skip to one point of interest which is, by the way, not particularly interesting to me, but it may be for some of you. This is Seaside Heights, and here on the left, the house from the reality TV show Jersey Shore. I haven't watched a single episode of the series, but if you have, well, here's the house. It seems to be a fun town with all kinds of attractions. The boardwalk, I mean, all these things very emblematic of an Atlantic coast beach town. And that's it, going inland. Gotta put some miles behind us. There's one point of interest we're going to miss, actually. Well, several. But the main one, Lucy the Elephant in Margate City, just past Atlantic City. But as I say, we'll return. I just want to get an overview of the area of the East Coast, see what it is like, see what I like. Our destination today is Cape May. We've been hearing about that town for years. By the way, that would be Ocean City, New Jersey in the distance, which was kind of part of the original plan, but it is getting late. We're gonna be staying at Seashore Campsites and RV Resort, which has since been rebranded as Sun Retreats Cape May. There are a handful of options in the Wildwoods, Cape May area, and this seemed like the best choice. Let's go into town. Let's get something to eat. Here we are, Beach Avenue in the historic district. And one of the things Cape May is most famous for is its Victorian architecture. It is actually considered a national historical landmark. This 
have made it to Cape May. We're going to eat at Cape May Fish Market. We have yet another New England clam chowder. And our last lobster roll of the trip. Not bad, pretty abundant. Mm, had to finish with the soft tea, right? From, what's the name of this place? Core Bros. Well, it is dark here on the, on the streets of Cape May. But I want to tell you something. That, uh, that clam chowder was probably the best we've had in the whole New England. Even though this is not New England, technically. But the lobster roll mm, was all right. Not the worst, not the best. But overall, it was a good experience. Uh, now we're gonna go back to the RV and, and rest. I still find it very unsettling that someone has to put, you know, pump your gas here in states like New Jersey and Oregon. It seems wasteful as of, you know, people and and time. You know, I, I could have done a more a quick, much quicker and more efficient job, but hey, that's the way they like it. Here. Let's check out Wildwood, which is the next town over, and while Cape May has that Victorian charm, Wildwood has a boardwalk with the biggest beachfront amusement parks and some pretty cool 1950s architecture. these signs and these hotels, they do have a little bit of a Route 66 feel to them, don't they? At this point, we're just kind of driving around aimlessly, realizing how quiet it is. It almost feels like a ghost town. That may be why we get that Route 66 vibe more than old Miami Beach or old Vegas, perhaps. And what happens is this town pretty much shuts down completely for the off season from November through May. Our timing, <laughs> impeccable as ever. Actually, it is kind of interesting to see it this way. There are three of these amusement piers, this one being the largest. The Giant Wheel is one of the largest on the East Coast. Another pier here on the other side, this one has the Great White Roller Coaster. Well, as you can see, Wildwood here, pretty much a ghost town, as you can see. That's as the off season begins, although today is one of those days, you know, it's beautiful days in the 70s. But yeah, this town is pretty much shut down now. <laughs> which, is, uh, which is funny how seasonal it really is. We're gonna continue exploring a little bit, but it feels almost like a post apocalyptic thing with everything closed. It almost feels like. Like they forget to turn off the lights, you know? They all left and and everything is just imagine this with people.
That would be the other third amusement pier. Check it out. It's one of those places, isn't it? I think we owe it to ourselves to return one of these days in the high season. Quick stop here at Burn Plaza. They have a Wildwood sign. Well, here's an, yet another Wildwood sign. Let's see if we can park somewhere so we can take a picture, you know, that iconic picture with a larger Wildwood sign. Right here. Everything is deserted anyway. By the way, does anybody know why the sign says Wildwoods in plural? Hello, Pelican Heads. Today coming to you from Wildwood, New Jersey. And uh, it is totally the off season, so this is like a ghost town, but it's one of those places that has like all these 1950s neon signs and, and um, you know, a bunch of like cool looking hotels. We're gonna go back to Cape May. I mean, there's not a whole lot to do here today. There is a way to go directly from Wildwood to Cape May, but it is through this toll bridge, which has one peculiarity, and you'll see it in a few seconds. Yep, the toll booth is in the middle of the bridge, and of course, it is a drawbridge. It wouldn't be us if we didn't visit at least one of the local breweries. Cold Spring Brewery here is located in a historic barn dating back to 1804, just outside the historic Cold Spring Village. Well, this is a historic brewery here. We'll, we'll find out the history soon. As I said earlier, the building itself is a historic barn. The brewery, they have only been around since 2014, but the beer is really good. Cheers. And uh, yeah, that was good IPA. Now we're gonna go into town, have some dinner. But first, we're gonna go somewhere else. We're going to Sunset Beach, which is pretty much, well, almost the westernmost point in the peninsula, very close to where we're gonna take the ferry tomorrow. Here on the left, we have a World War II lookout tower, and we're almost there. I can already see Delaware Bay. Well, that would be the wreck of the USS Atlantis. Hey, check it out! Dolphins! USS Atlantis here, the most famous of the 12 concrete ships built by the Liberty Ship Building Company during World War I. 
These ships were built out of steel and reinforced concrete, which was cheaper to build but harder to operate. In 1926, the ship ran aground here, and they could never set it free. We're going to eat at a very special place tonight, but first, let's stop by the lighthouse. And some people will risk their lives to get that perfect shot. That lens looks expensive, wouldn't you say? There's the 1859 Cape May Lighthouse, but this area is also very famous for bird watching. Right here at the Cape May Wetlands State Natural Area. There are a bunch of trails, but we're just gonna look at the birds from here. Ooh, check out that plane! <laughs> I was just this far away from this campus. I had to keep it because I had friends that All right, let's go eat. The lobster house here comes highly recommended, so let's check it out. When the bread looks good, usually the rest of the meal is good too. That's Ilis. And this is mine. Well, that was probably the best meal of the whole trip, so thank you, Rob, for recommending that. Um, the Lobster House here in Cape May, which is a fitting end to our time here. And uh, tomorrow we're waking up at the crack of dawn, actually before dawn, because the only ferry that was available was the 7 a.m. ferry. So uh, tomorrow we're going to Delaware. So good night. It's still dark. Well, you can kind of oh, look at the moon. But in any case, why have we awakened at this uh, ungodly hour? By the way, good morning. Well, the only ferry we could get was the 7 a.m. ferry, and we didn't want to be late, so it is 5:53 a.m. We're about 10 minutes away. Should be fine, right? <laughs> We're going into Delaware.
we wait. It is always exciting to get on a ferry, you know, change things up a little bit. And off we go. There's the SS Atlantis and the Cape May Lighthouse. Amazing how the birds will follow the wake of a ship. The sun's peeking out. That would be Cape May in the distance, I believe. There's the Delaware Breakwater and East End Lighthouse. Yes, we're almost there. It is technically not our first time in Delaware, but it kind of is. In the past, we've only driven the 23 miles or so on the I-95 corridor that goes through Wilmington. And this time around, I'm sorry to say, the timing isn't really going to work out. We're going to drive around Lewis here and find somewhere to park. It is not a bad looking town, let me tell you. The peculiar building here on the left is the Zwanendel Museum. It is a replica of a Dutch city hall, commemorating Delaware's first settlers, the Dutch. Let's go by the public beach so we can park and take a bathroom break. I forgot to go on the ferry. Very nice sandy beach here. Nice beach here. Uh, this says heading parking only, but of course I only had to go to the bathroom. I, I doubt they're gonna mind. I, I, the parking lot is empty. I doubt they're mind. I'll park here for for just a few minutes. And now, I mean, it's early, it's, it's gonna be closed, but we're gonna stop by Dogfish Head, one of my first IPAs.
Too bad the timing is not gonna work out, it seems like such a nice area. There are several points of interest around here, Cape Henlopen State Park, also Joe Biden's beach house, no joke, but I doubt they'll let us visit. Still, let's pass by Rehoboth Beach to see Dogfish Head Brewery, and I'm telling you, the idea was to take a later ferry so we could arrive here when the brewery was open, but timing. It doesn't always work out now, does it? And we already have a hard-to-get reservation for tonight, so it's not like we can change plans. Here's Delaware Seashore State Park. One of these days, one of these days, one of these days we'll pay a proper visit to the first state. We are now in Fenwick Island and pretty soon here we're going to cross into Maryland. But first, let's stop by the Fenwick Island Lighthouse. It is very historic, dating back to 1858. Unfortunately, I don't think we're going to be able to park and it is not open for climbing anyway, so a drive-by will suffice for today. Now to Ocean City we go! Very touristy, lots of hotels and mini-golf. Here we are, Ocean City, Maryland. We're gonna stop at one of the back streets to take a break and I was gonna walk around a little bit, but realistically speaking, I think it is a better idea to go to our campground first, drop the trailer and then come back. We are meeting up with longtime viewer and friend Dale, also known as the Traveling Elk. This happens to be the eastern terminus of US 50. There is the sign Sacramento, California, 3073 miles. US 50, of course, one of the most important cross-country highways. It used to go all the way to San Francisco, but that section was replaced by Interstate 80 in the 1950s. It is one of those mythical, legendary, epic, bucket list drives. I'm thinking we might do the whole thing in summer 2022. We'll see. Today we're staying at Assateague Island National Seashore. I was able to secure a site at the Oceanside Campground. And there's the Verrazano Bridge over Senepuxent Bay. Not to be confused with the larger, more famous Verrazano Narrows Bridge that we drove on a couple of days ago. This one actually has two parallel spans. One for motor vehicles and one for pedestrians and bicycles. And here we are, Assateague Island. On the left, behind those bushes, that would be the State Park campground. We're staying a little farther south and here we are at the National Seashore. I keep saying it, there should be like a fast lane for annual pass holders. Just saying. Here we are. I got site number two by the entrance. That's our campsite. Now let's go all the way to the beach over here. There it is, the Atlantic Ocean. And these beaches are famous for the wild ponies that roam them. Hopefully we'll get to see some. I kind of wish we would have come in the summertime, or at least warmer weather, to take a dip in the water. And that's Ocean City in the distance. And that's the view looking south. Apparently you can drive on the beach. 
and it is very windy out here, but a beautiful day nonetheless. Let's go back into town. No wild ponies yet, but I've been reliably informed. They come right around sundown. We're going to park here at the Inlet Parking Lot, which is free Monday through Thursday. And today happens to be Thursday. Now let's wait for Dale. He should be here any minute. We are now on the boardwalk. And Dale here is going to give us a tour. <laughs> Dale. It is pretty lively, actually, especially compared with other boardwalks we've seen lately. That would be Jolly Roger at the Pier Amusement Park. The whole boardwalk is almost two and a half miles, so as far as the eye can see. It is the Fireman's and a 9-11 uh, memorial. This monument is dedicated to the firefighters of the world and there is a piece of steel from the World Trade Center. Let's check out the Ocean Gallery. It's been here for over 50 years. It looks very interesting from the outside, but I have no idea what to expect inside. And judging by the exterior, I was expecting to find something like East Jesus inside, but not at all, actually. I am pleasantly surprised. There's some horses. Now you said you saw some. Yeah, just in case they don't show up <laughs> <laughs> today or <laughs> tomorrow. Here's the owner. He's a he's an interesting fellow. Now we're gonna have some world famous popcorn. World famous. All right, so this is it. I'm gonna eat some tomorrow. <laughs> I mean tonight. Tonight when we watch uh, YouTube. An arcade. We're going to have lunch somewhere nearby and Dell is leading the way. Yes, we're going to this place called Sunset Grill, located at Sunset Marina, just a few minutes away from the boardwalk. How's the grill? Let's check it out. That's a Florida Keys vibe to it. A little bit. Nice bar. Yeah. 
All right, here we are with the traveling elk. He lives here too. There she is. And uh, we're gonna eat and have a good time. <laughs> and, always a good time with Robert. <laughs> with Dale, always a good time too. All right. Four states. Dale is the kind of guy who knows how to have a good time. And after lunch, he said, let's go to a brewery. And uh, here we are. Burley Oak Brewing Company at nearby Berlin, Maryland. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It was a great time to see Dale once again, which we've actually bumped into each other along the road in four different states now. We're going to end our day by doing a hike at Assateague Island. And maybe we'll finally get to see the famous horses, huh? Let's go on the little trail here. It's only three quarters of a mile. Average walking time, 45 minutes. Hmm. It's longer than I expected, but shouldn't be too bad. We still have about an hour of daylight left, so we should be good. Let's do it. Part of the idea of doing this trail is the possibility of maybe, just maybe seeing some wild ponies, but we'll see. Baltimore Boulevard. Interesting. Now where are the horses? Yes, according to the sign, this used to be a road built in the 1950s and destroyed by a storm in 1962. And this is all that remains nowadays. There's some kind of photo shoot going on. I don't think we're gonna see any horses. I have a bad feeling about this. What do you think? Yeah, it's been a pretty nice trail. Pleasant, but I'm sorry to report no horses. No horses to be found. Oh well. We're almost back. Hello there. You're so cute. My little pony. Well, yeah, lo and behold, as we're going back to the campground, the ponies are everywhere. Hello there, little pony. Now our day is complete, but let's finish it at the beach. Definitely no wild ponies on the beach at this time. I guess the horses never went to the beach. Maybe they don't like the wind. They are staying on the main campground road. I see it. 
I'm so excited. Hello, Mr. Cardinal. This may not be the most iconic wild setting. Somehow I was expecting to see them galloping into the surf at dusk. But hey, at least we got to see some wild ponies and that's the main thing here. So it was totally worth our one night stay. Yeah, that's all we could get. Well, we woke up at the crack of dawn in order to see the sunrise. Well, how cool is that? Yeah, from here we get to see the Ocean City Ferris wheel illuminated at this early hour. I still can't get over the fact that they have the lights on on the ferris wheel and uh, how cool it looks from all the way out here. Like a beacon of fun, if you will. Pelicans! And on the other side, they're nearly full moon. All right, it is time to go. Ooh, what do we have here coming up ahead? Is this like the farewell committee? Well, what do you know? We have some wild horses bidding us farewell. Very cool. You can never have too many wild horses now, can you? Riding, riding. So why did the horse cross the road? My RV. We've got ourselves a pony jam. And with that, we say goodbye to the wild ponies of Assateague Island. Now the road will take us farther south to Chincoteague in Virginia, another island inhabited by wild horses. Now let's see if the weather cooperates because there is rain in the forecast. The plan was to go into Sinkatig. I think that's how you pronounce it. There's more wild horses and stuff there, but with this weather, I'm like, eh. let's continue. Let's get to, to our harvest host early, you know, take a break. And then we have the live stream, so. We might stop, you know, we have three hour drive, so we might stop here and there. And we have the, the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, which is kind of bucket list. Yeah. 
Well, we're about to take the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, 17.6 miles long. This is one of those tunnels in which you're supposed to turn off your propane, and I did, before we left as a TIG. But they don't really check, they just ask. There's a scenic overlook. I am so looking forward to this crossing. I have always been fascinated by engineering feats like this one. The bridge tunnel was opened on April 15, 1964, and in the 1990s they constructed the parallel trestle. As of 2022, construction of a parallel tunnel is underway. It has 12 miles of trestle, two one-mile-long tunnels, four artificial islands, four high-level bridges, and approximately two miles of causeway. I think we're gonna drive under that war vessel there, coming up on the right. Yeah, I think we just did. Mind-boggling, huh? That's Virginia Beach. We're almost on the other side. Riding, riding. Well, we made it through the Chesapeake Bay Bridge and uh, tunnels. Tunnels, plural, there's two tunnels. Now we're a little over an hour away from our harvest host for today and yeah, I'm gonna take a break. some torrential rain, eventually we've made it to our harvest host, the Whipping Radish, North Carolina's oldest microbrewery, and uh, yeah, at some point we crossed into North Carolina. One of the more difficult harvest hosts when it comes to parking, especially if you have a towable. Luckily, at this point I'm like, hold my beer. I shouldn't brag. I still get into pickles from time to time, believe it or not. Well, good morning. Today we're going to the Outer Banks. Hoping for a sunny day here because we brought up the battery down to 30% and I don't really feel like like firing up that internal combustion generator, but it was sunny this morning. This feels more like like fog. So hopefully it'll it'll burn off. Burn up in the next couple hours. We're going to Kitty Hawk. What are you doing up there? Yeah, goats are kind of crazy, aren't they? And the sun came out as we cross over onto the barrier island chain known as the Outer Banks. Yes, I said Kitty Hawk, because our first stop is going to be at the Wright Brothers National Monument. But here's a fun fact. When the news came out about the Wright Brothers flight, they said it happened at Kitty Hawk. Well, actually, Kitty Hawk is about five miles north of the site. But at the time, it was the closest town. Nowadays, the actual location is Kill Devil Hills. And uh, here we are. I was gonna say it again, but I am not. Well, here we are at the very spot where the airplane was invented and uh, this is apparently the field. So we're going to go into the visitor center. We're going to see what's going on in there and then see all the, all the markers out here. 
uh, that mark the spot where the first flight took place and the second flight and and whatnot. Let's go into the visitor center and in true national park tradition they have a raised relief map of the site. And here is a picture of the first flight. Sometimes I find it peculiar all these events from the past being so well documented. And here's a reproduction of the flyer itself. The original is at the Smithsonian, at the Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C., and we saw it a couple of years ago. They have all these exhibits explaining all the problems they had to solve in order to achieve controlled heavier-than-air flight. And to these days, airplanes operate on the same basic principles of lift, roll, pitch, yaw. Here's a piece of the original fabric and the unique engine crankcase. That was very interesting. Now here's the airfield. Here we can see reconstructed the hangar and the living quarters from the Wright Brothers 1903 camp. Not exactly roughing it now. Actually, the first year they lived in a tent and then they built the second hangar and moved into the first hangar. Here we are, this would be the very spot where they would, would have taken off um, this field here. The prevailing winds from the ocean, of course. Um, those are the markers. Let's, let's walk over there, the markers that mark where they, they, the, all the flights landed. And this would have been the end of the first flight. We just walked it in about, probably we could run quicker than <laughs> the flight flew here. Just 12 seconds, 120 feet from, from the takeoff point back there. Of course, they improved and then the flights became longer. There's a more modern aircraft and yes, they do have biplane sightseeing tours. So they used a launch rail to provide a smooth surface for takeoff. Let's go see the monument. There's no specific oversized parking, but there's no one here by the back and we'll be quick. Now we're gonna hike all the way up there. Shouldn't be too bad. And wouldn't that be cool to go on a biplane ride? That almost looks like Red Baron's plane. Hmm, maybe not. Another time, perhaps. Here's another view of the site from this higher perspective. And we're almost there. Oh, that's a cool sculpture. Let's go down there next. In the TD3, our trusty home on wheels. And the site where history was made. The birthplace of controlled powered heavier than air flight. And the reason they chose this site, the prevailing winds coming from the Atlantic Ocean. Well, this right here would be a life-size representation of that picture we saw inside the visitor center. And it's cool to see it, you know, 3D, you know, from uh, that perspective. Let's go all the way around and see it from the photographer's perspective. Here's the exhibit explaining what we're looking at. Let's get a little closer to the action here. This is the perspective. We never saw in that picture huh? from the front. At least we can imagine what it would have looked like in the front.
Now we continue. I decided to take the next street over, closer to the coast, but I've realized that seeing the ocean from the road is rather uncommon pretty much everywhere. Roads like A1A by Flagler Beach, Florida, or California Highway 1 are extremely rare. So we're going to get back on the main road, which is US 158. Here on the right, Jockeys Ridge State Park, home to the tallest sand dune on the East Coast. We'll be back to explore someday. Coming up there in the distance, the Bodie Island Lighthouse, dating back to 1848. Around here also is the Oregon Inlet Campground, which comes highly recommended, but that's not where we're staying tonight. We're going to drive across Oregon Inlet onto Pea Island. I can't help but compare this drive with one I have done many, many times, and that would be the Overseas Highway. I certainly get a Florida Keys vibe from this road. Is it me or does this feel like a less developed Florida Keys? I mean, geographically, both island chains are very similar. Now comes the moment when Robert does something really stupid. I wanted to stop, maybe climb over the sand dunes, see the ocean. You know, I love doing that, but I didn't take into account the fact that the sand was so soft and so loose and so deep, and by the time I noticed, there was just too much traffic to get right back on the road, so eventually friction won the battle over momentum, and we got stuck, really stuck. Luckily, eventually someone stopped to give us a hand, help us out, but the camera crashed, so I have no video of the rescue to show you. Whoever you are, if you're watching, thank you, you really did save us a lot of trouble. Now, let's not do that again. Let's stop to take a break. Ooh, it looks like you can drive on the beach, but we won't be doing that. Not until we have a more capable vehicle. Check it out, fly pelican! You know, I grew up by the Straits of Florida. I basically saw it every day until I migrated at the age of 16. And I love the ocean. I love the beach. It may seem like a contradiction, but along with the mountains and the desert, a beach is my happy place. If it was just a little warmer, I would be jumping in that water right now. We continue. There is the iconic Cape Hatteras Lighthouse, our next stop. And here we are. Well, there it is, the famous Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Uh, unfortunately, as of October 2021 here, you're still not allowed to go to, to the top, COVID. So um, all we can do is just take a picture from this uh, disadvantageous position because the sun is right behind us but it is what it is we'll continue we'll be back one of these days the lighthouse was constructed in 1802 and then rebuilt in 1868 after the civil war in 1871 it was the tallest brick lighthouse tower in the world it was moved to its current location in 1999 well, that's the lighthouse back there, but now we're gonna go to the original location where the lighthouse used to be located, which is by, right by the beach here. Well, it's marking the storm surge from different hurricanes. Wow. Well, yeah, apparently the shoreline has been receding over the years, and well, the lighthouse was far away from the from the, from the shoreline in 1852. Right now, it would have been too close, so that's why they moved it. We are here, so um, went towards the water, 
imagine the life the lighthouse would have been somewhere in that vicinity which let's walk into the beach right now because it's actually a very very nice beach Such a beautiful day here at the beach. I don't really, I don't even feel like leaving, but we have a ferry to catch, so we gotta go. But look at that. This is this uh, this pole right here marks the original location of the Hatteras, the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. Right here, so close, so close to the ocean. I can see why it would be uh, dangerous, you know, with hurricanes and stuff, like to keep it here. So in 1999. They moved it over there, which is quite a distance. Must have been quite the feat of engineering. All right, let's go back. Let's go back now. We're going to take yet another ferry to Ocracoke Island, which is the next island, only accessible by ferry, by the way. And there's another ferry going back to the mainland, but we haven't been able to reserve that one. So there is a distinct possibility we may have to backtrack tomorrow. Not ideal, but hey, what can you do? Someone recognized our rig while we waited for the ferry, which took about an hour. And there's our ride. The distance itself, it is not that far, but the ferry has to make a big loop to avoid the Hatteras Inlet Crab Spawning Sanctuary. Okay, let's do it for the delicious crabs. Nice houses here. And Minitini 3 on a ferry once again. Yay, pelicans! What a nice sandbar. We definitely have to come back to this area. And so much wildlife. We decided to have lunch inside the camper. Why not? Hold on, we got ourselves a stowaway. We're staying at the Ocracoke Campground, managed by the National Park Service, because all this is part of the Cape Hatteras National Seashore. And it is right here, on the left. And 
there's no one here to greet us. I mean, we already paid, so I guess we just go to our site and that's it, right? This is it. It is a short, if steep, hike over the sand dune to access the beach of the Atlantic Ocean. And what a beautiful day it is. Here we are, we've made it to our beach in Ocracoke Island. Perhaps a little too late in the day and in the season to truly enjoy it, but this is a wonderful beach. Look at that. It's a great swimming beach. And uh, now it's definitely uh, in the list. It's one of those places. Someday I'd like to return to. As you know, as I keep saying, you know, this kind of trip through the coast was more of like an overview, a discovery trip in a sense and I knew we're not we were not gonna enjoy fully any of these areas but we'll be back tomorrow it's this is kind of the end of the of the trip in a sense for the next two days we're just gonna drive west towards Atlanta actually I wanted to take the other ferry but I forgot the name of the town we couldn't we couldn't uh, find tickets it was uh, completely booked so we have now we have to go all the way back through the outer banks and then west towards Atlanta the sunset is upon us it is magical there is some kind of photo shoot happening and uh, Take a look at those colors as another day comes to an end. That's a pretty elaborate sand castle. Let's go into town to grab a quick bite. Ocracoke is supposed to be a quirky little town, so I'm kind of bummed out we arrived so late. 1718 Brewing here on the right seems happening, but let's see what else there is. There are a couple of other places, restaurants and whatnot, but that first brewery was really happening and we've had good luck with breweries lately, so that's what we're going to do. We got fish, we got pretzels, we got cheese curds and flies! Yay! Oh, that was pretty good. Good beer, good food, and lots of fun. Now let's get back to the campground. Oh, check out the moonrise. Good morning. Ooh, how elegant. The flight of the pelican. Poetic license, right? Fly, pelicans! There it is. Now tell me, did you see the green flash? Rewind, you know you want to do it. Fly, Pelican! It is magnificent.
living today. I'm gonna go for a, for a little run here on the beach. This was nice. And I've never actually done chicken breast on this grill, so we'll see how it comes out. Almost ready. Oh so, yeah, cheddar grilled chicken sandwich. Cheers. Mmm. That's really good. Mmm. Well, it is with a heavy heart that we depart from paradise. We really like this place. Okra Cook. I believe that's how it's pronounced. We will definitely return sooner, sooner than later. Maybe spend three or four nights. I mean, it is boondocking, so that kind of limits how long you can stay Turn left. without going to the dump station and whatnot. But in a quarter mile, turn right toward North Carolina 12. Now we're gonna do a, a uh, resort tonight because I believe we deserve it. Full hookups. We have to do laundry. There's an, a year-long uh, swimming pool, so I'm assuming it is heated. So looking forward to that and then tomorrow we go inland towards Atlanta Naturally, it is Sunday, and everybody wants to get back to the mainland. Well, to make a very long story short, an hour and a half later, we are at the front of the line, where we remain, waiting for another hour. I think we have time to explore a little bit. I think there comes our ride. Right there. And that is the line. Oh my gosh. Some people do have priority. I'm assuming residents, employees, and this large contraption here that is going to take up half of the ferry. Hey, wait a minute! It is my turn. I guess they have to get the weight right with that heavy thing on the left-hand side. Here we go. Yeah, they made a very small dent on that line. Those people are gonna be there for hours. Whoa, that thing was heavy. It is going to be a busy rest of the day for the ferry, that's for sure. This is where we're going to stay, at the KOA Resort. I did get a $50 discount with my KOA points. Yeah, this is probably overkill for only one night, but it is exactly what we need. 
well after several days dry camping I decided to splurge here with the deluxe site with the KOA patio at the KOA here at Cape Hatteras K KOA resort and it actually does this is the one of the first KOA resorts that actually feels like a resort and I imagine this in the dead of summer is gonna be a madhouse but right now it's half empty it's very quiet it's beautiful the pool looks to be super clean they have a super clean laundry facility that we're gonna use today and yeah we're not gonna take advantage of all the amenities but all we need really is one good night with full hookups and um, and laundry we need to do laundry and now we're just gonna have some wine grill some burgers and just uh, relax here with the few hours of sunshine we have left Saying goodbye to the Outer Banks. Mmm, that's gonna be good. coming soon to the swimming pool let's go see the sunset there's a park right across the road from the KOA How many sunrises and sunsets have we seen now over the past few days? All different. I don't think I've ever seen so many pelicans in my life. Let's go back to the KOA. It is probably the largest swimming pool I've ever seen in a campground. Well, good morning. We do have beach access here at the KOA. Yay. Here we are. Well, you know, you know I had to do it at least once, right? Put my feet in the water. And uh, it is frigid. It's very nice. We'll be back. We'll be back to the Outer Banks for sure. And, uh, and enjoy this, this marvelous beach. Look at that. In season, because right now it's... I mean, I'm sure if you're from, from Scandinavia, you'll find the water balmy, but this Florida man finds it, you know, uncomfortably cold. In any case, I keep saying goodbye to the Outer Banks, but now for real, now for real, we're, uh, we're going away from this idyllic place. We're gonna have breakfast and we're heading west towards the uh, Charlotte area. Look at those waves. 
can you tell I don't really want to go? But as I mentioned a few days ago, we do have to be in Miami the 1st of November. And we want to stop by Atlanta to see family on the way there. So the road beckons. It is going to be one of those all-day uneventful drives. We'll pass by Raleigh, North Carolina's capital city. We're going to spend a night at Charlotte at the Fort Mill KOA. We've been there before. Riding, riding in my RV, wherever I want to be. Because I'm free in my RV, yeah, I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I Cause I'm free in my RV Driving The pavement rushing under the tires A different time zone You know I'm gonna get higher Cause I'm on fire Riding Have no idea where we'll end up tonight It doesn't matter Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Somewhere remote we're gonna boondock We'll see the Milky Way or a shooting star if we're in luck Oh, this is clamping, yeah You know It is the way that we like to roll And making memories out here is what nurtures my soul Yes, I am riding, yeah Riding Riding in my RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding Riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free In my RV Yeah This is it. We've arrived at our North Florida retreat, also known as Pelicamp. I really hope you have enjoyed our fall 2021 season. Until the next one, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Cause I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding I'm riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV <laughs>